Mr. King, can you can you hear me? Can you see me? Oh yeah, all is well. We all good. What's happening? Man, all is well. Just relaxing, man. I gotta thank you first and foremost for coming on the platform. It, this is this an honor, man. You know, coming from the city, you doing so much, man. Uh, living young, long, young legend. Oh man, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you having me. I see you doing your thing. I'm like, I know we talked about it, so only divine time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Likewise, man. I really admire what you're doing with the music, man. You representing. Uh, see, we're gonna get right into it, man. For the viewers who may not recognize you, uh, just let them know what you know what your name is and definitely where you're from. Yeah, for sure. Yo, my name is Mookie Motonio, aka the Ohio player from up the way, Cleveland, Ohio, South Side. <laughs> right, that's what's up. Big shout out to the 216. Um, now I kind of want to go take it back a little bit. Um, now, when did you first get exposed to hip hop? Um, was it something you heard on the radio or something you seen on TV? Or did you have, you know, rappers in your family? Damn, it's funny you said that. It's, it's a little bit of it's a little bit of everything you just said. When I first ever like the first rap song I ever heard was LL Cool J's I'm Bad. That's the first rap song I ever heard. And it was something that I like I was well, when it came out, I wasn't, I don't think I was born yet, but you know, after years I was hearing it, you know, and I started learning the lyrics and I would dance to it and everything. And that's when I started to actually start to understand what rap was. As time went on, my brother, he was, uh, he was in a group called Unit 3A. Unit 3A was a group out of Cleveland. They was on Donnell Jones' first single, Players in the Hood. The video is actually on YouTube. Um... It's funny because this is like a gym from Cleveland. A lot of people don't even know, you know. And um, t Boy, she directed the video and everything. And he was like heavy in the game. But, you know, niggas went to jail and all that stuff happened. And um, a little after that, I remember the song that made me say, oh, I'm about to rap, was when I heard Bone and Biggie. <laughs> when I heard Notorious Thug, I was like, Oh no, I don't know what this is, but I gotta do it. <laughs> so Okay, okay, that's what's up. Now I gotta ask you about that. You said they hooked up with, with Donnell Jones and, and left out. Did they have to go out of town? Was they like in another oh, city or how they Yeah, it was Donnell Jones at uh at T at T Boss. T Boss okay. um she directed his video that it, the video's on YouTube. It's called Players in the Hood. It's two versions, but the, the video version was his ver his first single. I want to say they shot it in New York. I can't remember. I can't remember him what he what he. To be honest, he need to do his own damn interviews. To be real with you, he got some stories himself, you know. But uh, it's, he basically it's funny because when you go to the video on YouTube, you might see some comments of people saying like, "Who are they? They sound bad. Why they sound like Bone?" That's what they would say, but. That was the Cleveland song at the time. It was in the mid nineties. And um, the thing about it was they said Donnell Jones wanted Bone to be on the song, but they couldn't get Bone. So they got <laughs> the next thing, you know what I'm saying? The next best thing, the next thing they could find. And they did their thing. To be honest with you, I, he told me they wrote the entire song. You know, the group wrote the entire song from they verses to I'm you know. I don't know. If you, are you familiar with the song? No, I'm going to have to check it out. I'm thinking about it now. It's so all live, though. Listen, listen. The funny thing about it is it, it it had, like, early this year, it started going viral. Players in the Hood. It started going viral on TikTok. It was, like, something they was doing with the song. I mean, it didn't go too crazy, but, like, it's a, it's like, it's a dope record, though, you know. But, you, yeah, it's called Players in the Hood. And, um... And yeah, so they hooked up with T Boz and it was a uh um it was a lot of people back then. Eleven Six Soldiers was a part of it. Uh LT Mo. You hit the LT Mo. Okay. LT Mo's mm -hmm. a out of Cleveland. The most re LT he be producing shit that I wouldn't even know he produced till I talked to him. But the lat the most recent thing I know of him producing was that Wale and Jeremiah song that we've been on a tragedy for once. He produced that joint. You know, he used to produce for my brothers and them back in the day. Wow. So it's like, man, so it's, it was kind of like set up for me to get to where I'm at. They look, you know, from people doing what they did back then and, and for me linking up with Bone along the way, you know, it was destined to be this way. 
That's what's up, man. I mean, because Cleveland on the low be having a lot of talented people once you like, but you got to like research them and pull back a lot of layers. And you be like, damn, that was a Cleveland person on the hook or that was a Cleveland person wrote this or was a part of that. You know what I'm saying? For sure. For yeah. Sure. That was for uh, Cleveland, Cleveland is such a, um, they say small market, so to speak, you know, and musically, they would, you know, because it's not like, you're not walking down the street just so, and you can just walk into Atlantic Records or Bad Boy Records or something, you know? We don't have those opportunities. So we sometimes do have to venture off, either move or just go, like, travel just to make those connections, you know? Yeah, man. It's power and traveling and networking and, and getting to know people, man. Cause, so I know man. you anybody. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, man, this boy... I'm surprised you ain't in Africa right now. Right, just got back. I was in Zanzibar, <laughs> missing it already. Man, so have you hit up? I know you're supposed to interview me, but I got a couple questions for you too. So, <laughs> no, it's all good. Yeah, have you hit up like? Are you trying to hit like every every country? Yeah, that's the long term goal. I'm gonna hit every country on Earth if I can. I'm at like seventy now. Damn. How about in Africa alone? About twenty. 20? Yeah. Alright, you got a favorite place? Yeah, I mean, like, if, if you're doing it by continent, you know, Africa is definitely my favorite because it's the most diverse. You can see the full spectrum of human life and nature and beaches and women. Like, I mean, you feel what I'm saying? You wouldn't, typically, you would think of African or what they show us, like, oh, this is how an African woman look, but that's the full spectrum of the whole world, man, and it's just beautiful, different languages. They got the best food, the best weather. I bet um, it's yeah, the food, fresh, everything. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You ain't got all them chemicals and GMOs. And, and then when you see, like, women a lot of times in Africa, like, the plastic surgery game ain't hit over there like that. Like, so if you see something, you know what I'm saying? You know it's real, so. Yeah. 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 That's dope, man. That's dope. I'm surprised you ain't married one of them yet. Man, I'm trying to, man. I'm going to put it together. I'm going to move over there. I'm going to live over there. But it's just like a, a process because a lot of people be like, I want to get citizenship. I want to buy some land, but I want to kind of look around first because a lot of people go into Ghana or South Africa or Kenya, but it's like almost 60 countries in Africa. So I don't want to miss nothing that might be, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel it. I feel it. Now, a person like me who never been for like a vacation purpose to have a good time and whatever. What would you suggest for me to go? Man, you got a lot of options, believe it or not. Um, if you like to kick it, you want to be on the beach, you want the nightlife, you want to have fun, you from America, I would say Ghana is probably the, the, the number one spot, and most people do go there. But with Ghana, you got to get uh, like one or two vaccinations. So if really? you don't want to do the vaccine thing, you can go to South Africa. South Africa is probably the closest thing to America in terms of like technology and mall. They get they malls is better than ours. They cars is better than ours. You know what I'm saying? They got internet, high speed. It's it's like a West, like a like an Americanized Africa, but it's still Africa. You still see Zulus and the tribes, and people still you know speak their native language. And then after that, maybe uh Tanzania. You can go there without a vaccine. Tanzania is real cool. Um, but my favorite place, like in terms of living, like you want to raise a family, you want to like, you know, plant your flag. I like Cape Verde. It's like it's like 10 different islands and it's a small population. And Cape Verde is similar to Brazil because like Brazil, like America, in a sense, like it's a lot of racism. And, you know, they was colonized and they had the slavery. But Cape Verde, they, they share the same language and the women and the people. They look like Brazilian people, but Cape Verde, the crime rate is tremendously low and there's not a lot of like gun violence and killings and stuff like that. But in Brazil, they get busy. You know what I'm yeah, saying? I heard. Yeah, I heard, mm -hmm. sure. they, I heard it was active out there. I recently just found that out. Yeah, I went to school down there. I lived down there for a semester, man. But but it's beautiful, though. Like I'm not to take nothing away from the culture because Brazil, Brazil, they got a lot of strong african and black culture because there's more black people down there than it is in america so they the majority down there but it's still a lot of whites as well though yeah yeah, I, yeah. I, I, you know it's interesting 
one of the places I always said I wanted to go I, in Africa was like South Africa. I used to say that. I seen what movie? It was a movie that I seen, a couple movies, and they were in South Africa. And it just looked, the vibe just looked like somewhere I would like to go, right? But why why don't I need a vaccine there, but I need one for the other place? Um, well, each country make their own rules and their own laws, and they had different relationships. So it's a website you could go to. It's called uh, travel.state.gov, and it'll tell you if they require a vaccine or not. But if you go to your doctor, they may tell you you need vaccines just to be, you know, based upon your your like your health history. And also the, the climate and the weather is different. So like when you go to the west side, they, they got like malaria and yellow fever, like a lot of mosquito related type stuff. Where in South Africa, it, it's still it both can be hot, but it's like a different type of hot. You know what I'm saying? So niggas have mosquito nets and all type of shit on the west side. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I feel like so oh, okay. So even if so you saying if based on your health, even if you go to South Africa, you might still need some shots. Depending yeah. on your health. Yeah, cuz I don't want to say you don't need them cuz then somebody could say well he said I didn't need none. Based on the law, the the legal requirement is is none. But mm -hmm. if this person might have diabetes, this person might have heart condition, this person might have family history or whatever. So right. they gotta talk to their doctor, but none for South Africa though. Yeah, man. My bad to get off get off a little bit. I just had to <laughs> No, no, it's all good, man. It's an honor. I'm I'm chopping it up with a king. This this interview gonna last for, for decades, you feel me? Yeah, no doubt.